What up, players? It's War Boss Tamp in this mud. Welcome to How to Paint a Death Corp Creek Commissar, Part One. So we're starting with Steel Legion Drab. These are the paints you're gonna need: Corn Red, um, also Abaddon Black, Lead Belcher, or Chaos Black Spray. Although you are gonna need Abaddon Black eventually. Balthazar Gold. What is this? Morn Fang Brown. Xandri Dust. I think I miss Othwan Gray too. You need Othwan Gray. Averlin Sunset. Wah Flesh. And you'll notice I painted him up, oh, and Agrax Earthshade. I painted him up as a uh, Commissar Bane style, so he looks just exactly like Commissar Bane. But originally he looked like this, and I needed to make him match the rest of my army, so what I decided to do was just take Abaddon Black and repaint him. Paint over this paint job. Even though the paint job is pretty good, I decided to go with a similar color scheme to Commissar Bane. And who wouldn't want that? So Commissar Bane has uh, black, everything is black. So we're taking our Abaddon black and we're basically just going over the entire model. You wanna make sure that you, if, if you're gonna do this and paint over an old paint job without stripping the paint, that you uh, definitely, if you're gonna go with black, which is uh, one option, then uh, thin down your paint. I've got my Abaddon Black in a wet palette with parchment paper and water in a clamshell next to me and so that's gonna uh, allow the paint to kind of break up and not go on so thick and it won't cover up or obscure any of the fine details that we're gonna have to eventually get to. So this uh, video, while I do this, is a July Painting Challenge appreciation video for Patrick Gaumon, who was one of the participants, and he made it all the way through, and he painted up some Cador miniatures, and uh, surprisingly not Warjacks. For, uh, these are War Machine uh, figures, but they're not Warjacks, they're humans, and they are uh, really, really good. He, uh, his, his color schemes, his, his paint, painting technique and and stuff is just fantastic so definitely check him out if you have not already I'm going to put a link in the description below that you can check out to um, head over there and uh, subscribe to his channel if you haven't already and also if you can uh, send him a comment or a message or a note or something and tell him to film some more videos because that guy is great he is a fantastic painter Okay, so we're gonna let that to dry. So come on back in a couple of hours and we've got this and we're ready to continue with Steel Legion Drab for the face mask. Now again, we're using our wet palette and thinning down the paints. If you don't use your wet palette and you don't shake up your paint pot, you should always shake up your paint pot to mix the pigment with the uh, medium. Then what happens is your paint will either come on a little bit too thick and the pigment will separate and it'll look really oily and uh, it's it's not the effect you want and it's especially obvious over a black undercoat so definitely take your time shake up your paints and use a wet palette I know I, I do not use a wet palette nearly as often as I should I try to do it whenever I'm filming a tutorial but I know how it can get sometimes to just get lazy all right, Mornfang Brown is our next color, and we're going to use Mornfang Brown as a base for all of our leather. So this holster here, for our last pistol, we're painting in Mornfang Brown. It's got this nice, rich, uh, almost reddish brown tinge to it, so it's fantastic for any kind of uh, hard leather. I know for my Empire figures, I, I use Mornfang Brown a lot for the boots or belts. 
uh, any kind of straps like that. And there's also a strap that connects the holster to the belt, so you're gonna have to paint that with the tip of your brush as well. Okay. Next on our list of paints is Lead Belcher, and we're gonna use this to paint on all of these silver metallics. So for our guy right now, we're going to start, I think I started at the back with this uh, rebreather oxygen filter thing here. Easy enough. And we're gonna go down the side and connect to the front. I know a couple of painters who swear by using two cups of water, and I think it's a great idea. One cup for when you paint with metallics, and one cup for when you paint with uh, your regular non-metallic acrylics. And that's because to achieve the metallic colors, the paints have something like, like uh, metal silver flakes, colored flakes in them, and that's what achieves that metallic shine. Now we're going for the power sword. And um, if you wash your brush, if you use too much of that paint, you use it a lot, and you, wa you keep washing that brush in your, your cup with the other paints, then what tends to happen is that those flakes will, will find their way back onto the tip of your brush corn red, and then say you're painting something else completely different, like um, a red uniform or something, the uh, silver flakes will still be there. And that's not good, because they'll show up on your model. That's happened to me a couple of times. And so, yeah, I agree. If you if you can, if you've got uh, two cups around, that would be great. One for when you're using just straight colors like corn red, and one for using metallic colors. So this is kind of fine detail work. I'm starting with a sash. All commissars have their prized commissars red sash. So that's what we're going to start with. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to go on to painting the edging on the uniform, the trim, the red trim. So what you'll be noticing throughout this section of the video is that in order to steady my hand, I brace the palm of my right hand against uh, the inside of my thumb of my left hand. Uh, right, right where the, I guess the heel of your palm is. That's the easiest for me. Um, I know some people do it differently. Some people brace uh, the heels of both of their hands together. I found that when trying to get all these tricky angles, I like to kind of use the entire uh, length of my left hand, my thumb, to to brace the, the bottom. You can see the heel of my right hand is kind of braced against the inside of my left thumb and my left hand. If I want to get in really close and do some really fine detail work, then I will brace my hand up a little bit closer to the thumbnail of the left hand. And because my thumb, my, my thumb is holding the piece of cork like that, it won't mess me up, really. Um, I find that easier than moving the brush further down in my hand and um, I like to keep a very keep the tip of my brush pretty close to to my fingers I like to hold the brush as close as possible to the the silver part of the uh, close at the bottom by the tip as I can and it gives me the best control whatever you want to do you guys for to uh, maximize your brush control is you know up to you these are just the techniques that i use also being able to put your model on a piece of poster tack and put that onto a cork like i'm doing it allows me to turn my models around and not worry about dropping it i have these um <laughs> these these horrible nightmares or fears i guess they're not really nightmares i don't i don't wake up in the middle of the night but uh, I remember, and I just cringe when I remember that I used to paint hordes of night goblins for my orcs and goblins army, and I would try to, you know, hold them at different angles. And this is before I, I discovered the poster tack and and cork technique. And I'd be holding these night goblins upside down, trying to paint them, and constantly dropping them. 
And then I would get the uh, black orcs, and I used to have the old metal black orcs, and I would constantly be dropping them on on my toes and on my lap, and it was just so terrible. And now that I'm using this cork piece, it's so easy to wrap my hand around. But if you don't want to use a piece of cork, what you could do is you could use a uh, prescription pill bottle, some kind of cylinder, so like an old paint pot. And uh, I've heard, yeah, prescription pill bottles, old paint pots, uh, cork obviously works the best for me because it's kind of got that shape where your palm can wrap around it. All right, so you'll notice that I painted the trim on the, the great coat as well as the red fringe on the shoulder epaulets. I'm not painting the entire epaulet red. The top we're going to paint in gold braiding, but I'm also getting the red trim on the commissar's cap. And uh, you'll notice that I've, uh, if, you, if you can zoom in, you'll be able to see that I've made some small mistakes. I got the reds, uh, the corn red on some places of the model into the black areas, which is not what we want, but we'll be able to fix that in just a little while. So I'm not bothering with it right now because it would just, you know, kill me if I had to go back and forth between painting on some red and, oops, I made a mistake, wash off the paint, get the Abaddon black, paint on the Abaddon black, back and forth, it's just not worth it. Okay, next we're into the Zandri dust. And the Zandri dust is actually going to be the base for our yellow. Now, when you're painting over black, what I've found is that Averland Sunset is not strong enough to go on by itself. It's going to streak uh, the pigment and the, the medium uh, just does not work for a good, strong, solid first color. So I'm starting with Zandri dust, which is a yellowish um, beige color, off-white. And it's uh, the perfect color to build up to a yellow. There you can see I painted the, the general shape of the top of the epaulet. That's a funny word, epaulet. Epaulet. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I didn't take French in high school, I took Japanese and even that, I took only, you know, one year and don't remember any of it. Alright, so when painting the epaulette, you take the paint on your brush and you put it on to the epaulette. And you'll notice that the paint is just on the tip of my brush. A lot of new people, painters, this is a mistake that I actually made a lot, even after I shouldn't have been calling myself a new painter anymore. I would put, I would dip my paintbrush too far into my paint pot so that when my brush came out it was down to the metal with paint and uh, you do not want that much paint on your paintbrush. Believe me, if, if anything you want to keep your paintbrush at a fine tip as long as possible and get the paint only on the tip of the brush. It's easier to clean and um, the paint won't dry up in the ferrule, which is where the bristles meet the metal. Because once that happens, boy, your, your paints, your, uh, your, the hairs on your brush start splitting and it's just not good. Alright, so we're back to the corn red. Just before this, what I did was I, I took some Mornfang Brown and I just went back over the holster because um, I thought it could use another coat. So now I'm going back to the corn red and I'm painting the trim on the cuffs. If you feel like you're looking at your model and you think, oh, I can really see the black undercoat, which is what I, I thought when I was painting the, uh, the, the Commissar and I saw that the holster, I could still see some of the black. All you have to do is go back over with a second coat, even a third or a fourth. If you're thinning down your paints, then there's no, you know, there's no rule. You, you can paint as little or as much, as many coats as you want over over anything. It's until you are satisfied. The next thing I'm gonna do is I think get to the gold. Hopefully, yeah, here we go, Balth is our gold. So now uh, with this model, you've got a Commissar with a power sword. 
and so we're gonna pa paint the hilt of the saber in Balthazar gold and we're also gonna get in Balthazar gold all of the um, gold metallic areas so for example the the eagle on our commissar's cap we're gonna get in gold and the fringe on the front of his uniform we're gonna get in gold and again you'll notice anytime you see my brush the paint is just on the very tip if anything down to about maybe halfway down the bristles but you'll never see uh, paint gunking up the the bristles and the ferrule where they meet because I I learned my lesson I I've lost so many brushes to um, just carelessly just shoving it into the paint pot and just making a mess out of it. Okay, so after painting up the eagle, the hilt. Yeah, now we're gonna get to the, uh, I, I believe, the the front braiding on the commissar's uniform. It's also got that little throat uh, collar piece with the eagle on it. And now what I'm doing is, I've got, uh, you can't really see it because the hand is in the way, but I've got paint very, I, I wiped off most of the paint so that there's only a little bit on the tip of my brush. If you have too much paint on your brush, it's, it's going to gunk up all of the detail which we don't want. Now all I'm doing is I'm dragging the bristles, the tip of the bristles, over the, uh, the, the the detail of the front of the uniform, which you'll see in a, in a little bit. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking Ultimon Gray, I'm going to put it on the tip of my paintbrush. Again, I'm only going to get a little bit of paint on the paintbrush. You do not want too much. Most people use too much paint on their paintbrushes. Every situation, I don't care who you are, uh, you're, you're probably putting too much paint on your paintbrush. You don't need that much. And what I'm doing now is I'm just dotting the little buttons. There's three rows of buttons on your commissar's front uniform. And what I like is this Ultuan gray. It's it's nice and light. It's it's a very light gray, almost white. And I decided I could have gone with Runefang steel, like a bright silver, to contrast the gold. But I thought, you know what? To offset the gold, I'm going to go with a flat light gray color and what that's going to do is it's going to read almost like um, pearl like this guy's got pearl buttons or or ivory and uh, it's going to just offset the gold really really nicely and again I'm not dotting each of these buttons I just kind of dragged the the bristles across and because I didn't have too much paint on the tip of my brush it uh, it didn't gunk up the detail so now what I've got is I've got my Abaddon Black, and you'll notice that I'm trying to correct the mistakes, but that's that right there, the last five seconds, if you saw my brush, what I did was I started at the fold, and I worked my way into the red. And that's what I'm doing with all of these areas. I'm starting a little bit further out, and I'm working my way in. You, you want to almost picture it like a, a, a wave lapping at the shore of like a, a lake or a beach. Uh, the, the water doesn't just go to where it ends up, right? It kind of comes in slowly, and then it goes as far as it's going to go, and then it pulls pulls away. So that's kind of the same concept as fixing a mistake like red uh, red edging on your great coat or the red trim on your hat. You want to take your black and you want to paint uh, into where the red has overshot its mark. So right there with the hat, I'm starting at the center and I'm working my way towards the red trim. If I started right at the red trim, you know what would happen would be there would be too much black paint right where the mistake happened. And then there would be no place for the black paint to go. So it would either clump up and dry like a big ugly line, or if you try to spread it out, it might ruin the trim that you had already painted. If you start off in the black area and you work your way in kind of like a wave lapping towards the shore then you get right up to the mistake and then you can decide for yourself how little or how far you're gonna go and that's basically my theory for cleaning up a mistake on trim
All right, now I'm just taking a look at my model and I'm seeing that we're really getting close to the line, end of the line. So what we're going to do is we're going to work our way towards the shades and the washes. We're going to do that by starting with Karak Stone. For all of my Deathcore Creek figures, <coughs> oh, excuse me, we start with the, the gas mask with a Steel Legion Drab and then we work our way up to this Karak Stone. Now this definitely, you do not want too much paint on your brush because um, you, you do not want the Karak Stone to completely cover up the Steel Legion Drab. You want it to basically accentuate and highlight and pick up the lines while keeping some of that Steel Legion Drab in the folds. And the folds of the gas mask for all Death Corp Krieg are on the sides of the face, the two sides, and right down the center of the face. Lead Belcher. So you definitely want to not get any of your highlighting paint into those cracks. With Lead Belcher, what we're doing is I'm... What am I doing? It looks like I am painting the plates on the hands, all Death Corp Krieg gloves with plates on them. I'm also adding a little bit of cleanup to the respirator and the eye lens. A lot of people forget that the eye lens of the gas masks are a, a separate material. So I like to paint them silver because the silver contrasts from the black of the eye lens and the silver contrasts from the Karak stone. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking my gold and I am painting up one of the two metals. And I'm also going to paint the little bar that pins the metals to the uniform. It's up to you what color you paint your metals. I decided to go with one silver metal and one gold metal. And there's the bar at the top. So you'll be able to, to tell if you, could, if you just look at your model a little bit closely, you'll see where the, the bar is. And it's up to you to, to decide what ribbon color you want. I decided to stay with the red and uh, offset it with a secondary color, which is going to be Wa Flesh. So there's one metal painted, and the second metal is going to be Wa Flesh. I used to be an ROTC, or junior ROTC in high school. I used to love getting medals. I thought they were the coolest thing whenever I uh, got nominated for something, got it at award ceremony. Ah, oh, so proud. Okay, we are ending up with Agrax Earthshade. This is the last step of part one. All we're doing is basically painting some shade into the gas mask as well as the holster and all the red areas. You want to drag the sh shade out so it doesn't puddle and pool and just spread it out to other areas of the model that need it. You don't want to waste any of your shade. And what this does is it tones down really nicely the Karak stone. And it ties all the reds together for a nice dark red to build up from. And it makes the Mornfang Brown leather straps, holsters, all of that, it makes it uh, look a lot more lived in, uh, realistic, all that, all that good stuff. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I love this figure, love Death Corp Krieg, I love Forge World, all that stuff is just so cool. And um, definitely, I hope you check out Patrick Galmont's channel and uh, leave him a comment. Let him know that I sent you and uh, thank him and get him to make more videos because he's awesome. Patrick, if you're watching, thank you for participating this year, for filming all your videos. It was truly inspirational and um, I made this little tutorial for you and uh, thanks very much for watching. Latest players!